Do more expensive XLR cables sound better than cheap XLR cables? And the answer is no. Well, maybe sort of. And let me explain what I mean. More expensive cables are generally shielded better and are less likely to pick up interference, electromagnetic interference or radio frequency interference. Aside from that, they generally sound about the same. I haven't noticed any substantial difference in the sound quality. And I haven't noticed any difference in even in my own measurements in the noise floor generated with different cables, whether expensive or cheap. Now, I imagine there are some really, really cheap ones. Maybe that would be the case. But in the cables that we tested here, haven't found any difference. Now, let's kind of just jump into some examples here. I have some examples of electromagnetic interference. And we did some testing with RF interference. We weren't able to get any generated with any of the cables that we had. And the one thing I did find though, is that certain microphones you need to be more concerned about. So here's a wireless transmitter for a microphone system. And here is a Jay-Z Microphones Vintage 11, one of my favorite microphones, but it is not radio frequency shielded. Here's an example as I turn this on. Now, that is not the cable, that is the microphone. I tested and tested and tested, so. <laughs> and then also we measured self noise with all the different cables that we have. We plugged in a dummy XLR connector with a 150 ohm resistor across pins two and three. If you have no idea what I just said, it's all right. That's basically a dummy connector that makes it so that you put the load of a microphone on that cable and that preamplifier, but you don't actually get the input from a microphone. So it's just kind of a way of testing these kinds of things. And here are the results. No human ear can detect this level of difference. So there is no major difference between the different types of cables and how much self noise is generated. Now, cables, of course, are made up of the cable themselves plus the connectors on the cables. So let's talk about each in turn. First of all, for cabling, obviously when they are shielded or better shielded, they reject more or prevent the cable from picking up electromagnetic fields or radio frequency interference. So I would generally recommend Mogami or Canare cables. Some people say Canary. I don't really know how it's supposed to be pronounced. It's a Japanese company, as I understand, but the Quad Star or Star Quad, whatever it's called, uh, we'll put links for these down below if you're interested. The Canare actually don't tend to cost quite as much, and I've just, in terms of performance, seen them do just as well as the Mogami cables. So I'm really kind of a fan of those. I can't count the number of times when someone went out and bought, say, for example, a Sound Devices Mix Pre recorder for $950. They bought, they were going to do a podcast. So they bought a Shure SM7B for uh, what are, whatever those cost now, $400. And then they went out and bought an Amazon Basics cable for like $13. And then they complained to me, hey, I'm getting this buzzing sound. Can you help me fix it? And the first thing I always do is look at the cables and almost always it's because of a cheap cable is run down behind a desk right next to a bunch of AC power adapters and it's picking all that up. So that's the first thing to consider. If you use, if you're in a situation where you do have to run your cables down behind a desk and you want to be more careful about it, having these cables from Mogami or Canary is going to put you in a better spot. You're less likely to pick up any of that noise. I would still also keep your cables away from AC power adapters. If you have to, if you have to cross a power cable, for example, try to do it at a 90 degree angle instead of running it right along the power cable. Never bundle an audio cable along with some power cables just to avoid these types of issues. Now, connectors. The XLR connectors also, I think, are important to consider. I would say I've had a, the best experience with Neutrik connectors. So when you go to buy your cable, if you can, I would actually recommend you get a canary cable with Neutrik connectors, period. And that's going to give you the best experience in, in my experience. So a couple of things about connectors. Number one, that's often where the cables fail is the solder joints within the connectors. So the Neutrik connectors have pretty good strain relief on them. So that's generally not as much of an issue. And then secondly, I found that Neutrik connectors seem to be manufactured with greater with better manufacturing tolerances. So I've never heard of one getting stuck in a piece of gear, unless that piece of gear was a really cheap piece of gear and had the wrong size 
you know, or its manufacturing tolerances weren't that bad. A lot of the other part, the other third party, or I don't know, third party, other connectors, especially no name brands, I've heard a ton of people complain about those getting stuck in their recorders or their preamplifiers or their camera port, whatever it is. And that's a real pain. And you, you don't want to, you know, go yanking on that and destroy your recorder or camera or whatever. So that would be my recommendation. Again, Canary Cable, Neutra Connectors would be my number one recommendation. Mogami's great as well. Seems to be a lot more expensive these days. Be careful about where you put your cables. Make sure you learn to wrap them correctly. That's an important one. If you don't know how to do that, go to the YouTube channel SoundSpeeds. He has a great tutorial on how to wrap cables so that you don't strain them over time. And with that, you'll have a very good audio experience. Get out there, make some great sound, and we will talk to you again soon. <laughs>